Welcome to another episode of GUI Challenges, where I build interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to do it your way, because with our creative minds combined, we will find multiple ways to solve these interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills. And in today's GUI Challenge, we're building color palettes with OKLCH. All right, so why should you care about HSL or LCH? They both have L's in them, right? They gotta be the same. It's not quite the same. It's the, the, let, me, let me show you a little demo here. So on the left, all these colors have HSL 50% lightness and their saturation is maxed out. Over here, we have LCH, which the L is set to 50%, so just like HSLs, and the chroma is set to something quite high as well. But notice how we don't have quite the range of vibrance. Now, initially, that might make you think that LCH kind of stinks because, well, look at these. These are delightful. You can make candy out of those. And these over here, they look kind of bland and lame. But this is where we start talking about this inner set of cells here. So on the left, we have this 50% red, but what it actually ends up being is 54% gray perceptually. Same thing here. We can see that this is changing though. Look at this. This number staying the same in HSL. Why is the perceptual color changing? Well, just look at blue. You can't even read the black text on there because it's so dark. Look, it's down here in the 30 range. Whereas yellow, you can super read it because, well, it's in the 97% lightness range. So perceptually, HSL is all over the place. Look at these. We have 30s and 90s and 80s and 60s and 50s and whoo. Over here though, in LCH, we have consistency. That consistency is what is going to enable you to build a dynamic palette that is accessible in a way that you can sort of predict that usability will be there, that you can have color pairs that will be accessible across various hues. And that is what we're going to work on today. We're going to make a color palette in one hue, maybe a couple hues. We're going to be able to adjust the hue on it. But we're going to see that we get a consistent palette across all these hues, and then we're going to use it, and it's going to be rad. So then you also might be asking yourself, can I even use OKLCH? Nobody I know is using this. Surely it's not available. And then shoo, it's uh, available pretty much everywhere. It's very recently in Firefox. So in case you're wondering where that was, it's also pretty much recent across the board. But that means it's a good time to get into it, start getting familiar with this more powerful color space, because not only is the lightness more consistent, it's not just better for color palettes and design systems. It also reaches in to wide gamut ranges, meaning this will push the vibrancy and the color. You wanted candy colors. Wait until you see the candy colors we can make with OKLCH because it is a wide gamut color space, whereas sRGB or HSL, they are limited. And let's dig into that coming up soon. And here is what we're going to be building today. I pretty much just have a div with a bunch of swatches in it. You can see them here. They're outlined. We'll probably get rid of that outline, but it's nice to see them skeletally there. And then over here, we have a header with a, some t a small set of text. We're going to put the two different colors here, and then we're going to build a little card. So we're going to make a color palette and then build our whole entire site with it, checking it in light and dark along the way. And then we're going to end in the debugging corner. Come along for the ride. It's a colorful ride today. I've also got a lot of really cool cascade layers set up. So we have like our demo variable are going to be created here our light ones inside of it we're going to have demo usage so this is when we're going to use our palette values and you can see i've already set up a lot of stuff so here we're already using swatch one through ten in these they're just undefined and we need to go do that work today and then down here we have the demo palette so this is handling the layout for the palette items there and all the swatches we have just a general card layout and then the support styles that are kind of supporting things like a max width on paragraphs and kind of giving us some article styles and anyway nothing too important there but we are going to be spending our time right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is looks like uh, I forgot to add. Well, I don't think I forgot to add. I wanted to show that we're going to add a hue variable and we're going to stick at zero for now. And immediately right off the bat, hue zero in OKLCH, which is the space we're going to be working in today, is different than HSL. It is not red. It is a bright pink color. And I don't know, it's kind of a cool color, actually. It's like ruby red pink. It's pretty sweet. So to start out using OKLCH, just like HSL, we're going to call a function and we're going to pass three parameters. In this order, we're going to go from L to C to H, so lightness to chroma to hue. And our lightness at first, let's have it at 99%. We're going to give it a 0.1, so that's not even that low a chroma, but we might drop that chroma down and then we're going to use our hue. Go for our hue. And this, we sh yeah, we should see that populate right away. Now, in the light theme, that doesn't look so bad. In fact, that looks pretty good, but I'm going to inspect it and switch to the dark or the light theme here and see that it is actually a little too saturated for me. I'm gonna want this at 0.05, let's cut it in half. 
Yes, very, very pale pink, because if we want to use this against white, we're going to want it to look pastel-y, and this is also our lightest color in the palette, so we want it really pushing that. And look, we're at 99% lightness with just a little bit of chroma, and then we pick a hue, and sure enough, we got what we asked for, and it looks great. We can even pop open the new color picker and see if we are in wide gamut territory or not, and it looks like we're on the cusp. So what do I mean by wide gamut territory? Well, literally, there's a border between the two territories right here. That's funny. It worked out that way. I totally didn't plan it. This is the sRGB uh, territory. This is where HSL, Hex, HWB, a lot of the colors that you've been familiar with over the past 20 years, they fit inside of here. Now, on the outer rim is your HDR, your wide gamut colors. And these are coming in your, your new Macs, your new phones, all these things that claim to have a whole bunch of color. They're displaying colors from here. So CSS can now display colors from here as long as you stop using HSL and hex. Those will never reach into the wide gamut ranges. You're going to have to switch if you want to see your website in a high dynamic range. It's almost like VHS versus DVD. Old sites are going to look desaturated. They're not going to have the pop and colors that the new ones are in DVD websites. <laughs> this is like a weird... Anyway, there's a reason that we need a new function, and that's that sRGB is literally limited to like a million colors and other color spaces can go into the billions. So that's kind of what we're getting to. And some of the colors are better. So like when I was asking about the lightness range here, if we're in high dynamic range space, there are, look, you can see there's high dynamic range light colors, high dy dynamic range dark colors. And then of course your candy coat uh, colors up here. And we'll get to that one. But right up here, it's just kind of nice to see that I'm writing right on the line. I'm just outside of where sRGB was able to make a really light pink. So I'm, I'm picking a new pink. This is a pink uh, that you've probably never seen in an app before because, well, it's just in a dynamic range space. All right, well, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to keep building uh, and I'm going to leave that color picker open because whatever. So this next one, I'm thinking we're going to drop it about 10% and let's double the chroma. And that's, that's pretty good. And maybe a little lighter. And that's pretty negligible. Let's just stick with that though for now. We don't want to dwell too long on some of these. Okay, so next one we're going to drop. Let's drop it another 10% uh, and just go down to 80. And in here, we could even double the chroma because look, we're a little desaturated, a little muddy. We can double the chroma, get some vibrance in there. And now we got ourselves kind of a nice little pop in pink there, which is good because we're moving towards the middle. And the middle one, let's see, it's six or five. One of these two, I'm going to make a really vibrant one. Let's actually make it this one. And this one is going to be 0.3. Okay, here, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. So this time, let's jump another 10% and see where that gets us. It gets us into muddy town. So let's bring this up to 0.25. So you can also notice a little pattern happening here as we drop the lightness and enter a sort of middle zone. We're gaining the ability to pump up chroma and hit these brighter colors, which really means we'll probably be able to get to here. Let's do like 72 like 65 and 0.3. So in OKLCH, 0.3 is pretty much where your maximum is going to be for the display P3 color space. In fact, let's look at this one here. Look at our palette already kind of forming. It looks great. Uh, let's grab our candy colored co color here, pop this open, and let's make sure we're in the top right. Look at, we're not quite in the top right. So that means I might be able to get some vibrance out of here. If I drag this up here, what does it do? Ooh, 0.31 and 0.67. Yep, we want that. So we want 67% lightness and 0.31. So that's really going to give us, look at that color. That is a hot, hot pink. Let's even compare it to regular hot pink, deep pink. Deep pink is the, is the deepest color that you can get. Hey, where'd that go? Did I spell it wrong? Hey, DevTools, what's the dealio here? Let's go background, deep pink. All right, well, that one's stuck. And look. Do you see the difference? This is the deep pink you thought that was the deepest color. You're like, I don't need new colors. There's no HDR is not that big. Look at that deep pink. And look, if we pop this open, we can see we're pretty much in the top right corner of what is even capable of this particular color space. And it's just not comparing to that. That is juicy. So it's exactly what we want. And we want a really juicy color in our color palette because if you want those accents on like your tabs or your buttons to just really have that vibrancy, that's what you want. And we used the dev tools to help us discover the color. So now we are, in fact, in the top right. Our hue is still maintained at zero, and we got to sort of estimate our lightness and our chroma values for this. In fact, let's go to OKLCH.com and take a little short deviation here. Let's set the hue to zero, because that's what we're working on. Let's set our chroma up to the maximum that we can get, which was at what we were at 0.31. Oh, look, this is even saying that, oh, we're going to have to drop our lightness, because we're at like 0.31. 
67 lightness, right? And then we'll pull up on our chroma up here to like 0.3. Okay, excellent. Now, see what we have here? Also, is a great comparison showing p3 versus the fallback so this is like as close as srgb can get according to this tool and notice our peaks and valleys here this inner territory is srgb this next one is display p3 that's the majority of the devices that we have out in the wild right now that are hdr and then we have other future devices that are using this even bigger peak of rec 2020 and i've enabled those down here so that we can see them but as you can see, we've got our chroma pretty much maxed out in the P3 space. And look at how few of hues can represent that maximum chroma. So we're just going to, we're like, we've lost yellow. Yellow won't be able to have a chroma that high. But what's cool is if we ask it from the browser, it's still going to give us a super rad yellow. And then look here, we can even see the peaks and valleys in 3D. So that pink that we're asking for is way up in this space here. And it's just so cool to see. So that's sort of the relationship that you have here is as chroma goes up, hues will change and lightnesses will change. And this tool is really good for helping you visualize it as well as Chrome Dev Tools, which has this view, which is also uh, super helpful. OK, well, I'm going to grab our next color, pop into color six here. And I'm thinking, um, let's just drop it by well, 10 percent. That's been a great theme so far. OK, that's OK um 20 let's go like 25 something like that i don't know that's okay um maybe a little darker actually i feel like um we need some more change yes excellent maybe a little more chroma out of there let's go like 27 that's getting kind of nitpicky but i did like that it's sort of vibrant it brought it up just a little bit here let's even let like let's do our dark color here because i feel like i'm going to need to know what our dark range is now OKLCH has an interesting thing is that it starts to get super dark at about 10 percent which is one of edge kc features like OKLCH is corrective and is probably the best space that we've ever had to build color systems in before but it does have this one issue which is a lot of the dark colors are packed into the 10 percent space and i also estimate it's because of our color support that like in a better monitor with even wider gamut we're going to see a lot more dark rich colors show up and we'll see them here underneath this 10 percent but i don't know that's that's a hunch. I haven't really tested it. Um, we're going to drop this chroma down to something like 0.2 or something like that. Now that looks pretty, um, pretty dark on this dark theme. But if we switch to, well, on the light theme, I, I suppose if we switch to the dark theme, look at that. That is not dark enough. If I'm in a dark theme, I need on my darkest color palette item to be super dark. So let's go like 5% that is still recognizably red. It's very dark ruby red. Um, and I think I'm just going to stick with that. Now we just need to figure out our range that goes between these. Oh, we still need to fix this one. So swatch number seven. Let's drop it, you know, 10% again. That seems to be pretty consistent for us to make a change here. We are making 10 items, and so that, that helps a lot. Let's drop this chroma down so we can get a little darker. Um, I think I want to go darker than that. Um, let's go like 35. Okay, that's pretty good. And a nice ruby color. Look at that. It's like a... I can see a crystal being that color. Um, all right, well, here we'll go 25 and 25. Nope, let's go 15. Let's go 20, let's uh, 30. Uh, I don't know here. Let's go, let's go back to 25 with the, yeah, that looks fine. Let's fill out this last one and then we can kind of eye, eyeball the rest here. So we'll do like another 10%. I dropped this down to like 0.2 as an estimate. And that's pretty good. Yeah, I don't love this color here. So this one is a little, it, it needs some chroma. Yeah, I think that did it. Maybe we even drop this one down a little bit here to be like 13. Yes. Interesting. I, You know what? I'm going to call it good for now because uh, otherwise I'm going to be here all day nudging it. But we have a nice set of light ones and we have a nice set of dark ones. Now, here's the next thing that we want to do in order to help us make a predictable, accessible palette. We need to have, on average, a, a difference of 60 in the lightness between the text color that we're going to use. So if we're in like a if we're going to have our text color be almost white, we're going to want to pick a, a complementary surface color, another swatch that's at least 60 percent darker to get our uh, accessibility score. So if we're at almost 100, we're going to want something in the 40 range. So we're probably over here in the swatch seven just to be safe. And that's how you can um, make your color pairings is estimating a delta of L. And so that's like this lightness channel here. It's a really fun, advantageous way to work. Um, and yeah, I think we'll continue with that. 
So what do I have here next? I have a text color set to swatch one. Oh, so this is because now we're going to build the, the accessible system out of it. So we're choosing our lightest color for our most legible text. So this is text you want it to like always be readable. Text two, we want it to be, you know, kind of themed, um, but still be legible, obviously still passing accessibility scores, but it doesn't need to be as stark and contrasty as the text that we want to always be read, right? It's secondary text. And I find that just one and two is plenty for almost all the apps that I design. Next, I do like to make a few surfaces, though. So we've got one surface here that's at the maximum darkness. So it's going to be a super dark uh, surface color. It looks like I built dark first, yep, and then light theme next. And we have nine and eight. So I'm just walking down the set here. And these are going to give us our really polar opposites. So text one on top of surface one is probably going to be, well, here, uh, it's 99 to 5. That's like a, that's a huge, that's 94, yeah, um, percent lightness difference and so we're going to see probably almost a 21 contrast score there and so we could probably drop this down to like swatch two and swatch three and maybe we'll hear well maybe we'll do that in a second and then notice in the light theme i pretty much just invert everything i take swatch 10 and i make it text one so it's really really dark red text and we're going to get some like peachy text here on our secondary text and um let's just go use it so i'm going to collapse this and go to usage. Okay, so usage, we want to set our background to var surface one. Excellent. In fact, I might want to make that darker. I'm going to make it darker right now. That is not ruby dark red enough for me. So maybe drop the chroma. Yes. Yeah, that looks good. Very nice. Okay, so I'll leave that. Uh, I can kind of collapse this back up again. And maybe I'll change that in the dark theme. We'll see here in a second. Um, I can get rid of this swatch outline because now we don't need it. We actually have our swatches in there. Okay, although we lost the fact that there was one down here. So maybe we'll leave it. Maybe we'll get rid of our gap. Oh, uh, now, yeah, let's get rid of the gap. And I'm like, I don't want to toy around in here too much. Um, okay, yeah, that looks good because now we can actually tell that there's a palette item down there. And we've got some wrapping happening. And then this is all squished. Let's just close DevTools for now. All right, sweet. Go back to our usage. So we've set the background color. We need to set the text color right now. So we'll say color var text one. And now all of this is a really, really, you know, light pink. And our background is a super dark ruby red. Let's inspect. And well, I'm actually interested to try out changing our hue as well. So here's our text color pairing. Let's see our score. It's at 20. That is superb i mean that's a, that's really really high contrast and it doesn't even look bad um you can even see that this isn't all the way white i don't know if you can tell on the, the recording here but i can certainly tell that that is not all the way white in fact let's make our next sort of uh, modification of usage and we're going to say like small text which is like we have a couple like little subheaders there they're going to use color uh, var text two let's see how those are scoring yep okay we can see that our subtext here and that's at 14, all 15. So again, a really strong contrast score. And I don't think we've lost anything from our design. In fact, this still looks really, really awesome. Let's pull this over here just to check that out. Um, okay, so we have a header and we have subtext. Let's make this card. I think the card is down here. Yeah, demo card. So we're going to set its background to var surface 2, because this surface is going to sit on top of our dark background. So it's going to look like it's a little bit in front. Excellent. Let's give it even a border, one pixel solid var surface three. And it needs some padding. One rem, sure. Nice, okay, so there's a card. That looks like a card straight up out of GitHub. That's so funny, look at that bright highlight, it looks really cool. Um, okay, and how's the text contrast here? So now what we're doing is we're contrasting our text one and our text two against surface two. So hopefully we still have ourselves in a nice pairing of contrast and we have 19 in there and 14 there, which means we could really change some of these and, and create some subtlety if we wanted to, but honestly, I think this is working really good. And I want to go change the hue. This red pink has been great. I always love it, but I want to see something else. Just a little change of pace. Plus, it's fun for us to watch this all change, and then we can check the scores. Here, let's check the scores in green. 15 and tw almost 21. So we did see a slight variation there between them, um, but it's not even close to what you would get inside of HSL. Let's check this out in a blue range. That looks really cool. Um, 20, so that matched the same as green. 16, so only slightly more. 20 and 15.2, very cool. What else do we got in here? This is really fun. 
Oh, wait, hold on. That indigo is awesome. Oh, look at how it's like hot pink on the side. There's something going on here, and I really like it. Okay, so 320. I'm going to change our hue to 320. It's just so fresh. Awesome. Look at that. Oh, and you know what we need to do is switch to the light theme and test out how everything is. Okay, everything looks good. Look at our really dark purple. This is cool. And this is so dark purple. You Most people would not be able to know that that's not black, and it looks awesome. Okay, it's well, it's almost black, and that's why we're almost at 21 in terms of like color contrast. And this one's at 19. So we could go if we wanted to. Let's let's try it out. Let's go to our usage, or here knows our demo bars. Let's change these. So right now we're in the light theme. So we'll come down here and we'll set our text to nine, and then our our secondary text to eight, and get some subtlety out of it. In fact, I didn't even see a change. Did it change? Our scores did change. So now we're at 19 and 15. Let's do it again. You could even uh, tell that if you wanted to handle different contrast preferences for users, all you're going to have to do is bump the, the swatches that you use in order to change the deltas. Okay, look at here. We've got 15 and 11. Oh, we could keep going. Not that you should be pushing it. I think I liked it how it was originally better, but okay, this is still looking cool. 11 and 6. Should we go one more? So wait, what's the difference between six and one? Let's check it out. Six is at 50 and one is at 99. Look at that, we're at 50% difference pretty much. And that's why we're still sitting at a pretty good passing score. We're almost at seven. So on here, let's change the hue while we're at this like more desaturated state. Well, not desaturated, just uh, less contrasty. Oh, that is awesome. I like how the colors almost look like they pulse down this as we're changing it. That's cool. Nice. I love it. Okay. Well, let's go back to the dark theme. Check that out. Oh, and we had changed a bunch of our contrasts. I'm going to set them back to the original because I like the really stark differences. Yeah, I think that's nice. So like, where this is almost white, it's just popping right off the page. It looks really sharp. Um, that's kind of the extent of the GUI challenge today. I wanted to build a color system that worked in light and dark. They gave us a couple of text colors and a few surfaces to play with. We get a nice accessible palette with lots of good contrast, the flexibility of changing hues so it's themable, it's dynamic. We've worked inside of a new color space where we're now in the HDR range. So we're not just producing colors that are in the SDR range. We're in HDR. We're making our DVD website instead of a VHS website. And well, I think we we have one more thing to do. We got to here. Let's change this to um, OK LCH GUI challenge palettes. Save. Check out the debug mode. And I'm going to go to the debugging corner. All right, here I am in the debugging corner and look at how fresh this looks. I love how Safari has the color integrated through the whole thing. And look at that dark, dark purple just looks so awesome. You can certainly tell that that's not black and it looks maybe it just looks especially good against this dark background. Here's the light theme looking awesome over here. We have it in Firefox and we have it in Chrome. Everybody's happy with OKLCH. Everybody's happy with these these dynamic color palettes. And that's the end of this GUI challenge. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you all on the next one of these. Take care.